downtown. It's Monday. It's January 2nd. And the word of the day is Beckfeifengesicht, which means a slappable face or a face that's really in need of a punch. Used in a sentence, Beckfeifengesicht is my favorite word of all time. (laughs) It's like the smurf of misanthropy, and I fucking love it. I'm already using it in verb form, gerund form, whatever. You you can tell a lot about a culture by the words it decides it needs, okay? (laughs) Which is why Americans invented the turducken, exactly. (laughs) I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's far center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Southwest Airlines tries to commit suicide by customer. Trump's taxes show suspiciously large write-offs for magical beans. <laughs> and a men's rights activist makes a regrettable <laughs> <laughs> But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow Skeptocrats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, happy new year! 2023. You got any Ooh. resolutions? I, I want to double the number of popes that we lose in 2023. That's, <laughs> right. that's legal to resolve, isn't it? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. I mean, as long as you don't vision board it, then the cops come and take okay. it and it's a whole thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nazi pope died. <laughs> oh. Such a shame. In our lead story tonight. The House Ways and Means Committee released six years of Donald Trump's tax returns on Friday, proving definitively that he lies on his taxes about as much as he does with that weird puckered face anus of his. And of course, like virtually every instance of us finally getting a hold of the evidence of Trump's misdeeds, we already knew about the misdeeds for so fucking long that having the proof seems all but superfluous. Right. And then you compound that with the Capone esque feeling that we're going after the tax returns of a dude who also did way worse shit. And yeah. the story can seem a bit <laughs> underwhelming. We have breaking new video of Donald Trump taking the tags off his mattress. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here it is. Now, but that being said, several of the revelations from his taxes are pretty fucked up and definitely worth pursuing, both from a legal consequences and a comedy podcast perspective. Yeah, I I definitely empathize with the, like, teenager who doesn't want to make his bed because he's just going to sleep on it again vibe. But, (laughs) I mean, if anything, the historians are going to need some citations for the the several chapters they're going to have to do on this shit show. There you go. So, okay, so let's start with the obvious. Uh, Trump paid a disgustingly small amount in federal taxes for all of the six years of the six years of taxes we have, including two years when he paid less in federal income tax than I did. Uh, He did this primarily by declaring or carrying over large operating losses from previous years, including a $105 million loss in 2015 and a $73 million loss in 2016. Uh, But there were plenty of other red flag raising moves that contributed as well. Uh, One great example that I saw on CNN, uh, his company DJT Aerospace LLC. Now, the, what? The, well, because the fact that it's a company at all is horseshit to begin with. It's his private helicopter. Get the fuck <laughs> yes, out of uh-huh. here, aerospace. Okay. Launching aerospace craft into the troposphere since 2010. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, yeah. The lowest, like low troposphere. Well, but, but worse, in 2017, the company claimed $42,965 in income and $42,965 in expenses. Get the fuck out of here! That's the same fucking number. The income and expenses were identical. And to be clear, the odds of that just naturally happening are no the fuck it didn't. That's the stupidest (laughs) lie! It's all Tyler's. Just like, uh, sir, I actually ended up being $42,964. Go buy a pack of gum, buddy. Go buy a pack of (laughs) gum. Look. We need if I, sticks. If I can belabor this metaphor slightly with a with an example from my own life, one of my hobbies is sending our accountant, Tony, who hates me with the fiery passion of a thousand sons, TikToks, where people give stupid and or illegal tax advice to upset him. Yes. Trump's taxes <laughs> are like he does them solely based on my TikToks I send to our accountant. <laughs> Wait, did you know you can hire your kids, but then you pay them as a college fund, <laughs> so there's no taxes. Well, they so, pay and, the taxes for you. 
And speaking of which, like every revelation about Donald Trump's rampant criminality, this one also involves his kids. Uh, See, one of the ways that he shielded uh, his income from like gift taxes and shit was by pretending that big chunks of it were interest payments on loans that he had given to his children. So in every year of his presidency, for example, he claimed that Ivanka Trump paid him $18,000 in interest on a previous loan. Exactly. $18,000 to the penny every year. And like, we, you know, we don't know the exact terms of any loan that he did or didn't make to Ivanka. But if you think about how numbers work as percentages for a minute, you're going to see that can't possibly be true. The, the exact same amount of interest every year, and it comes out to an evenly rounded thousand. Uh, and as if that wasn't enough, in three of those years, he received exactly $24,000 in interest from a loan to Eric Trump. Okay, it says he made $200 every 10 minutes for passing go i don't know that's it's like an industry term probably we don't understand that kind of thing it's fine, it's fine. i do Let like that even trump knew he wouldn't buy him giving money to tiffany though right yeah a limit right. even for him no come on guys take it serious. <laughs> we're gonna get so, audited uh there were also a few interesting revelations in terms of charitable donations uh the top line story that most of the news organizations seem to be fixating on is that he declared no charitable deductions in 2020, uh, which is uh, a, a bit at odds with his pledge to donate his $400,000 presidential salary to charity every year, if nothing else. Um, but a lot of those stories go on to point out that he did declare large charitable deductions in the other years. Well, so that's true, but it makes him sound way more altruistic than he probably deserves, since at least some of those charitable donations were like to his own fucking charity that he was using to buy self-portraits and shit. Right. And what? at least one of those charitable donations, I think the largest of those charitable donations, is the focus of a criminal investigation from the Manhattan <laughs> District Attorney's <laughs> office as well. Trump just walks into the frame and there's Sarah McLaughlin playing for just the price of a cup of coffee a day. You could buy a painting of this kid on a horse pan over it's and trump runs to the frame dressed like an orphan he's <laughs> swatting over and flies he's playing all the parts melania's in the background trying to do arms of the angels yeah, yeah right yeah <laughs> All right, so I, I, another kind of frightening revelation to come out of these things uh, was just how many damn foreign bank accounts he was maintaining during his presidency. Um, like most of this shit, though, it, it doesn't come as much of a surprise and some of it was previously reported, but to know how many foreign governments had direct financial leverage over the president and, and a president who'd shown himself to be nothing if not financially pressurable at that was a bit jarring. These governments included, but were not limited to, Indonesia, the UAE, Qatar, Panama, the Philippines, Mexico, Georgia, Turkey, and, of course, China. Now, I'm writing this story the day after the returns were made public, uh, and we're talking about thousands of pages of documents here, so I'm sure there are a large number of damning revelations still to come. But however bad it gets, I think it's worth keeping in mind that these are the tax returns from after his presidency was a thing, right? Like, we've got the year leading up to it, but... All of the other taxes, like, these are the ones that he paid once he knew that he was going to get presidential-level scrutiny on these things. And while that does make it all the stupider that he, like, you know, rounded off bullshit interest repayments to even thousands, it also makes you wonder how much worse it would look if we were to examine, say, his returns from 2004, 2009, or 2014, Right, which are the various years when his casino declared bankruptcy. But point being, however bad what we're seeing is... What we're not seeing is definitely worse. Okay, there's a deduction of $800 million. It says lots of people hit blackjack this year. (laughs) (laughs) Right, yeah. (laughs) Line item 415, bad at having money. (laughs) Now, of course, this release came after a protected legal battle that reached as high as the Supreme fucking court, uh, and it had a lot of congressional Republicans angry enough to threaten retaliation you know, once they take control of the House later this week. But then the Democrats were like, our guy just voluntarily released his own tax returns like everybody else since fucking Watergate. And the Republicans were like, right, yes, but what if we released Hunter Biden's tax returns? And the Democrats were like, well, well, then you'd accidentally prove that he's nowhere near as bad as your silly conspiracies make him out to be. And the Republicans were like, okay, right, okay, but still. Though we're mad, we're very okay. mad. Well, as soon as Kevin McCarthy wrangles Marjorie Taylor Greene and the representative from Staten Island onto the same side, we're gonna give you what fur. Uh, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see. 
<laughs> we're not hurting cats. Cats are so much better yeah, than these right. various flavors of Nazi we now have to run the <laughs> government with. <laughs> and in fuck your face news, this past week has been an absolutely golden opportunity for you hard C American communists out there because if ever there was a series of events to convince the people to seize the means of production it's the behavior of Southwest Airlines and by extension (laughs) every other airline in the country this week and just to be clear we already hated airlines way before last week and Southwest is the worst one. Southwest is the first one to get the wall. <laughs> like Ayn Rand would rise up and seize Southwest <laughs> yeah, Airlines absolutely. for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you know, everybody... Also, hard C, are there communists? <laughs> <What is it? laughs> no, so, okay, look, everybody is so focused on the thousands upon thousands of flight cancellations, but nobody's mentioning the fact that Southwest received exactly zero calls to its customer complaint hotline. After they shut it down. Did they just <laughs> yeah. shut it they down? Actually did. Shut that right the fuck down. No, no, no. So, a little backstory here. For those of you who don't know, most airlines work on what's known as a hub and spoke system. Right? They have a hub city, say, New York or L.A., and their planes fly back and forth along spokes to other cities. Now, this allows airlines to keep track of their planes easier, and it also means that when there's a cancellation, usually it's just canceling the trip there and sometimes back. Southwest does not use this system. Rather, they proudly operate their planes like national bus lines, their words, not mine, starting on one side of the country and traveling to the other, making stops at cities along the way. The problem, as you may have guessed already with this system, is that if there's bad weather on one coast, it can end up canceling dozens of flights, which is exactly what happened, stranding tens of thousands of travelers on and around Christmas. Okay, (laughs) so just to be clear, they had a meeting at Southwest and some guy was like, okay, check it out. I decided to reinvent the hub and spoke idea. <laughs> no, no, it's like the end game of Jenga, which is exciting. That's our new one. They literally tried to reinvent the hub and spoke yes. wheel model. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right. Okay. But it does actually get worse. So somehow in this flurry of cancellations, Southwest lost track of its crews and planes and The way for them to check in was an unmanned telephone line that reportedly had wait times of up to 24 hours. So even when Southwest was ready to fly again, they didn't have any manpower. As a result, Southwest ended up canceling as many as 3,000 flights a day and as a complete booking blackout until January 3rd. Yeah. No, so apparently their technology is so outdated that schedules were literally working shit out on pen and paper while they had flight crews on fucking hold. (laughs) Uh, According to the union, Southwest's whole system is based primarily on technology from the goddamn 90s. Yep. The, the, The last time they updated their fucking Nintendo 64 level technology, humanity was like... You know, whoa, hold on a second. It's a phone and a camera? Wait a minute. Right? Yeah. right? It's a calculator that can grab. <laughs> 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 uh, but of course, wherever there's a problem, capitalism is there to make it worse. Seeing these cancellations, other airlines doubled and tripled their prices, leaving stranded travelers with the choice of staying stranded for more than a week later than they expected or spending thousands of dollars that they absolutely did not have. Again, at Christmas. Yes. I- I'm not sure what other ingredients folks need for a violent takeover. Maybe some kind of puppy mulching machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Love it. Your heart's in the right place. But the Marxist revolution based entirely on people who can afford air travel being a little angry. Maybe not the best example. I'm, I don't know. I'm just saying. Like, can you believe this extra bag fee that I got. Do you hear the people? <laughs> like, I'm not seeing <laughs> see, right. that revolution. Obviously, Eli, all we need is regulatory oversight. Okay, so like like once Budapest got involved, the problem resolved itself as quickly as, as it otherwise would have, but with Budapest involved. Right, but Pete was there. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, as you can imagine, the consequences of these actions are none. 
Yep. Southwest has issued refunds, but the internet is rife with travel and meal vouchers not being honored, lost luggage filled with medications, and <sighs> other horror stories literally too much of a bummer to go into our comedy podcast. I guess what I'm saying is... If we, the people, seize the planes and just start running them for the greater good, I'm not saying it's going to go well. I'm saying it can't go worse. Let's just think about it. Yeah. People. Think about it. Look, look, if you're arguing in favor of nationalizing any industry, you'd be hard pressed to find a better one to start with. Yeah. Oh, just a bunch of bored, dead eyed postal workers flying your planes. <laughs> And in emission creep news, we have a delightful story about my favorite thing, which is bad things happening to bad people. And this type of story, it's actually been pouring in recently. George Santos, Spoilers. Trump's NFT trading cards, <laughs> FTX and Twitter and Tesla and all of those being worth about the same. Just so <laughs> many good ones. I feel like somebody put a Bitcoin wallet and like a tear from Elon Musk in a cauldron and they added just the right amount of monster energy and a rift opened in the space-time continuum and Patton Oswalt's prankster god showed up to fuck with all the terrible people. It's great. It's a great time to be alive right now if you're not evil and horrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we got the cherry on top last week as a nice little New Year's gift when men's rights activist Andrew Tate got arrested in Romania for sex trafficking right after being very publicly roasted by delightful environmental activist Greta Thunberg. Yeah, which is weird because he usually does really well in fights against 19-year-old girls. Okay, so. yeah. So, no, this story is the fucking best because I'd never heard of this asshole before this, right? So it's like... It's all like, like all Freud with no shot, right? The comeuppance and my desire <laughs> for the come up, comeuppance happens simultaneously, right? So like, <laughs> way to retroactively suck, Andy. <laughs> Great job. Yeah. So here's a little background on Andrew Tate, if you're not familiar. I wasn't either. Uh, he might be the worst person. Yeah. It, it's like he up was there. building a resume for the job of Heath wanting to watch you die slowly in a Romanian prison <laughs> <in> the job. <laughs> We'll start with his career as a kickboxer. So already I hate you. Every day, and it, all martial arts people, I already hate you. After he retired from the kickboxing, he did some reality TV and then some campaigning for Donald Trump. And he appeared on Infowars to help spread his pet conspiracy theory that we're actually in the Matrix. You know... From from the motion picture, The Matrix. <laughs> no, no, I get it, because only computers dumb enough to think human bodies are a viable form of battery could be dumb enough to create Andrew Tate. This all oh, makes sense. Yeah, this that's is working fair. out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that entire sentence from reality TV to InfoWars was like a kid elaborating when he realizes that his lie isn't holding your interest. Right. <laughs> if there had been an and blank at the end of that sentence on like the fucking SATs, I'd have gone with invented cancer, invented yeah. cancer. Absolutely. Me also, too. I just Agreed. I want to distance myself from uh, Heath's uh, comment on martial artists to the section of our audience most likely to be able to kick my ass. I don't hate you. I think you're just <laughs> swell. I join with Heath and will counter your martial arts with the gentlest of kisses. So there you, go. Now you have all three positions <laughs> of our company. Right. Thunderstorm I'd like to it. add a position. We'll pay you to do that with Eli, for <laughs> sure. That fight? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, we, oh, we sure. You turned down that. bullshit I when I want to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little more on Andrew Tate. He used his physical assaulting fame to launch a career as a social media figure with a brand focused on men's rights. Worse than inventing cancer. <laughs> so much worse than everything. And that's how he got banned from Twitter in 2017. After suggesting that sexual assault victims need to be held responsible for being, you know, known enablers of sexual assault oh, at that Jesus point. God. He really said yeah. something almost yeah. exactly synonymous with what I just did. But then he got reinstated when Elon Musk took over Twitter. And here's a tweet from Andrew Tate on November 20th of 2022. I've decided to fly to the failed state of California, walk into Twitter HQ and tell Elon Musk He's a legend. And just to make me extra, extra, extra happy when he eventually started dying slowly in a Romanian jail, Andrew Tate included a video that shows him on a private jet and he's got a bottle of Chivas Regal garbage fire fucking scotch, <laughs> which he's drinking on the rocks yep. like a fucking child from 
from, it gets worse, from a Glen Cairn glass that's designed specifically for drinking whiskey neat, you dumb fuck. <laughs> He might as well have a blender to make it into a slushy. I hate him <laughs> so goddamn much. Sorry, I'm getting off track. Also, the human trafficking. Well, but like, yeah, he's yeah, a human yeah. trafficker. I I'm honestly surprised the UN didn't add him for the Glen Cairn class alone. Right, yeah, right? that's got to be in the Geneva Convention somewhere, <laughs> probably. It should be. It actually gets worse from there, seriously. Somehow, this guy, Andrew Tate, became the favorite influencer in the world among people under 18. That's what somebody figured out last summer. His name was searched more frequently last summer than Donald Trump or Kim Kardashian. And he used the fame to start his online douchebag mill that he owns called Hustlers University. Oh, fuck. Where you. students learn to trade crypto and <laughs> NFTs ooh, to build their ooh, wealth. Oh, oh, Heath. Eli, Patreon question? goal, how much for you to attend Hustlers <laughs> University? <laughs> I already signed up, Eli. I'm on the waiting list. It might be like 40 to 50 years to life. We're not sure. Yeah. He's back to teach his classes. Side note, though, their site has a section of headshot pics of their expert staff. And the one that says Andrew under it has the face all blurred out now for huh. some reason. Yeah. I'm sure that'll prevent any negative fallout for the university and their enrollment. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the Greta Thunberg wait, part. Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Eli? Would you gentlemen like to guess how much a spot in Hustler University <laughs> 3.0 costs? I, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to ask. $49. <laughs> Sorry, did you say $49? $49. Well, that's less wow. than 50. <laughs> wow. How many Bitcoin NFT things did you get? 40. Oh, well, a lot when you get. Yeah, that's true. When you're paying in Bitcoin, it's a much bigger number. <laughs> All right. So that that's locked in. I'm definitely taking that class. Yeah. yeah. So, here's the Greta Thunberg tie-in. Andrew Tate decided to start a Twitter fight with Greta last week and tweeted, Hello, I have 33 cars. My, I'm not reading. He, then he gives a bunch of details, bullshit, like stats about cars. Fuck you, I'm not reading this. This is just the start after he lists his cars and his stats. Please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their respective enormous emissions. And that's when Greta Thunberg got... 3.7 million likes and counting by responding, yes, please do enlighten me. Email me at smalldickenergy at getlife.com. <laughs> okay, so love what she's doing. Not the greatest joke. Love the sentiment for sure, but, you know, we don't need to be body shaming all the adorable bantam penis people out there. That's important <laughs> that we don't do that. Lots of people are doing great work with a bantam. I'm just saying. Like, bringing in lots of other body parts, too, probably. Some people prefer that. Heath, Heath. Read a book. Heath, Heath. Sorry, sorry. Just, nope, getting off track. <laughs> Tate came back after that with an absurd video. He's wearing a Versace robe like an asshole. He's smoking a cigar. He's talking about the Matrix. And at one point, he brings in pizza into the shot from a chain in Romania called Jerry's and makes a remark about not recycling the boxes. And then the very next day, he got arrested by Romanian police for sex trafficking. Yeah, nothing says living the high life like eating Romanian pizza straight out of the <laughs> Washing what? it down with some shivis. What? Yeah. yeah, while smoking a cigar. Jeez, that's an insult to the pizza and the cigar, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I made it taste like he burned it. It's better this way. <laughs> All right. Well, now I'm going to ruin the party with a quick detail about how reality works. Boo, Sorry, but that's boo. like kind of our thing here sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Despite everything you might have heard about this, and you've probably heard a lot. I heard a lot about this. The pizza box from Jerry's in the video was not a crucial piece of evidence that alerted Romanian authorities to Tate being in the country. As fun as that might be for this guy to have doxxed himself while trying to argue about dick size after getting roasted by Greta Thunberg... That's like, it's just not how anything works, not how policing works. It didn't happen. The cops already knew he was in the country. One pretty good clue was that he tweeted a video on Christmas, a few days before all of this, of his own leg and foot literally setting foot in Romania with the caption, 
Romania. Mm -hmm. And he recently flew to Romania. That's easy to find out. And he owns a house in Romania that police had already raided as part of their investigation into sex trafficking. They didn't have like... Tommy Lee Jones scouring his Twitter fights trying to find the noise of an L train in the background or a telltale pizza box. Side note, in a YouTube video he made, Tate said that 40% of his reason for moving to Romania was that the police are way less likely to investigate sexual assault. Ooh. Aww. Said that heavy coin flip didn't work out for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, okay, but false premise or no, I, I want to say I absolutely endorse continuing that fiction about the pizza box for meme purposes, right? Let's uh, Don't get your news from fucking memes, but let's all agree that untrue as it may be, the pizza box stocks thing is the best thing that's happened to memes since Anakin Skywalker. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's so fun. It is. It's so fun. But when there's such a big slam dunk like that, just be a little more skeptical. That's, yeah, that's right. I guess, yeah, the little absolutely. lesson here. You don't have so to. So regardless to of, just take the layup. You got to slam to take the easy layup. It was It's a great layup either way. It's a bunch of bad shit happened to a bad guy. Regardless of that pizza theory being wrong, we get a really fun ending to the story either way. Most importantly, there's a good chance Andrew Tate is going to die in prison because he's a sex trafficker. Now, I know I'm supposed to say like alleged sex trafficker because he's not convicted yet, but um, no. No, he's a sex trafficker, and I'm saying that. Come to the U.S. and sue me whenever you get a, a little free time. I'm sure you got a lot of free time. You can do that whenever you want. Also, we got the best last word from Greta Thunberg on this. Right after the arrest, she tweeted, See, this is what happens when you don't recycle your pizza boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. So good. Bad people keep losing, and the prankster gods on a roll. Keep it going. Love Fuck it. Fuck yeah. And then here lies George News tonight. It turns out that somehow, against all odds, Herschel Walker was not the most egregious liar running for Congress last year. <laughs> no. Not even close. Right. Yes. No. The man who <laughs> once tried to justify his claims of having worked for the FBI by pulling out a goddamn novelty sheriff's badge on the debate <laughs> stage was, at best, the second most dishonest person that the Republicans offered up. And the guy who beat him actually won his fucking election. And, of course, I'm talking about New York Representative-elect George Santos, who stands to be seated in Congress on Tuesday, despite the fact that the only true words on his entire campaign biography appear to have been his name. Ooh, yeah. Noah, we record on Sundays. I would not commit well, yeah. to that based on how <laughs> this week is going. I said appears. And he just tweeted, I'm the guy who said, let's roll on 9-11 over Pennsylvania. So <laughs> it's, it's so just, close. It's, they pile We're going to get something so close to that. So, yeah, so this first came to light when the New York Times ran an expose showing how pretty much everything he'd ever said to anyone about anything anywhere ever was a fucking lie. Uh, during his campaign, he called himself the full embodiment of the American dream, which is true in the sense that the American dream is bullshit, but in no other way. Uh, he sold himself as a seasoned <laughs> Wall Street financier and investor with a family-owned real estate portfolio of 13 properties and an animal rescue charity that saved more than 2,500 dogs and cats. Uh, he's none of those things at all. None of them. None. It's at nothing. All. Why would you not use one? Use one true thing. Right, yeah. So, okay, so the main Wall Street firms that he claims to have worked for have never heard of him. Uh, there's no record at all of him owning 13 properties. And the IRS has never heard of the tax-exempt animal shelter that he claimed to own by name. And <laughs> and it turns out that that is just the tip of the bullshit iceberg with this guy. George, baby, did you think nobody was going to check? Public is right there in the name public office. My right? Guys. I right? gave birth to the square root of negative one. It's impossible to fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. All right, so let's let's start with the properties, okay? So his original claim was that he owned 13 properties, which he exploited for the sake of a bunch of forlorn, won't someone think of the poor landlord's claims about how his, all his tenants were stiffing him over the last year because of Biden's policies. But the Times expose showed that to be bullshit, and now he's admitting that not only does he not own any property whatsoever, but he lives in his sister's fucking basement. <laughs> it's, it's, I have, it's a nice race car bed. I have a lot of space, square footage. <laughs> well, I'm a tank hero on my Overwatch team. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> New York Times reporter repels down a rope. Support hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Hero. And so, and in the words of his own fucking explanation on this, by the way, he's, quote, looking to purchase a home of his own. 
right? Which I, I, that could mean he subscribed to Zillow Gone Wild. I don't know. <laughs> or, or glancing in the direction of subscribing to Zillow Gone Wild, given the phrase. Now, uh, so in terms of education, he claimed during his campaign that he graduated from Baruch College in 2010 with a bachelor's in economics and finance. Uh, on his website, he also laid claim to Eli's alma mater, NYU. Uh, it turns out Ooh, all of that's huh. bullshit, too. Um, he now admits that he didn't graduate from any college at all. And as near as we can tell at the moment, he also never <laughs> attended any college at all. Dude, you didn't have the pigeon noises required to be a fighting violet. <laughs> <laughs> I went to I went there, man. Me. He's like, OK, no, I actually went to the school. The dean of the school of hard knocks repels down out of nowhere. Don't even try it, man. Okay, <laughs> I, I will correct you. Where are they coming from? <laughs> I'm on the ground floor. Um, so th there's also a few discrepancies in terms of his work experience. Uh, on his campaign note, he says that he, quote, began working at Citigroup as an associate and quickly advanced to become uh, an associate asset manager in the real asset division of the firm. Uh, and then he adds that he, quote, was offered an exciting opportunity with Goldman Sachs, end quote. Uh, it turns out he never worked for either of those two companies in any capacity uh, now his explanation now that that came out is that he never worked directly for him but he made what he dubbed capital introductions involving those firms while working for what? a different company called link bridge investors yeah I, I think he's talking about like making deposits I guess, putting money in a bank other people yeah exactly <laughs> um but still but on the same site it lists his work with link bridge coming after he quit working for goldman sachs so it's way more of a lie than even his bullshit explanation suggests. I was actually at Goldman Black Ops. You can't <laughs> ask. I would have to kill you if I okay. tell you. Let's give him some credit here. Maybe the opportunity he had was to lie about working at Goldman Sachs. And sure. it, to his credit, that has turned out to be very exciting well, for no, him. No, it is. Yeah, it's a podcast. They offered even. me the opportunity to go fuck myself, which is <laughs> exciting. I did. Um, and, and look... I see why one might lie about their education, their employment history, or their financial success when running for office. Right? Thank you, Noah. <laughs> but some of his lies are downright inexplicable. Like, for example, at one point, he claims that he lost four employees in the Pulse nightclub massacre. And that is such a stupid lie that is so fucking easy to check. No four of those victims worked at the same place. Right. That, that it's that easy. And then w when that came to light, he walked it back by saying something even less believable uh, that those four people he was talking about were all in the process of being hired by his company. Fuck you. Right? We we were doing <laughs> interviews at their glory hole. I'm making oh, it Jesus worse. Christ. I can't I, stop. Mm, I sent them a request on LinkedIn. So uh, we were starting and I founded LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. I got to chop it. So <laughs> now this was far from his only foray into exploiting terrible tragedies for political brownie points, by the way. Um, he also claimed that his mother died of 9-11 cancer. Uh, he tweeted out that 9-11, quote, claimed my mother's life, end quote, after having repeatedly told stories of her surviving the 9-11 attacks. Uh, so then he like conflated that together with a story that she got cancer from 9-11. Right. Which, now, to be fair, like that is actually a thing that happened to some first responders because of um, contamination in the air afterwards. But there's no reason to believe it happened to his mom, who died 15 years after the 9-11 attack. OK, hear me out. The terrorists had one very slow moving <laughs> plane. <laughs> Just one. Just flying along. Okay, guys, we, we're going to avoid hijacking Southwest from now on. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's been years. Are we stopping in Boise? So, Boise? They're trying to charge me extra no. right now. Do, should I just pay it? <laughs> now, you might be thinking, well, surely 9-11 must be the most egregious example of exploiting a historical tragedy for ephemeral personal gains. But you would be wrong in that thought. That award is going to go to the goddamn Holocaust. Uh, he's also repeatedly claimed that his maternal grandparents were Holocaust survivors who fled Ukraine during the Second World War. Uh, would have been a neat trick since they were born in Brazil and don't seem to have ever moved from there. Uh, and, and unless you think that that claim means that Santos is Jewish, by the way, no, he's not. He has claimed to be Jewish before. Uh, also, that he's, he's he's claimed that he's never claimed to be Jewish before. Uh, and when presented with the numerous Weird. times that he did claim on record to be Jewish, he said actual fucking quote, 
I never claimed to be Jewish. I am Catholic. Because I learned my maternal family had a Jewish background, I said I was Jewish. And <laughs> ask me to borrow money right now. I will prove oh, it to God. you. Just <laughs> so, now, as I said up front, despite all this shit coming to light over the last few weeks, it looks like he will be seated in Congress. Uh, and given the Republicans' razor-thin majority and the fact that Santos is coming from a typically blue-leaning district, I doubt very seriously that he's going to get anything more than a slap on the wrist in terms of ethics violations or actual penalties for this. But <laughs> given how illegal as fuck his actual source of income looks from what we know so far, I'm not betting on it either way, to be honest. He's like... Do you remember after the Nancy Kerrigan thing where Barbara Walters interviewed the guy who was like, I'm a ninja. And she was like, you're not. And he was like, I am. He's like that, but in slow motion forever in the age of the Internet. <laughs> Jeff Galuli. Thank you. There That's it him. is. Yeah. Topical. <laughs> of course you have Jeff Galuli's name <laughs> fucking at your <laughs> fingertips. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And Did you want to make a joke about Amy Fisher now, too? What do you got? <laughs> and in statistically irrelevant news, stupid people who believe in psychics and stupid people who play the lottery, myself included in that latter group, joined hand in hand this week to not understand how numbers and or lying works after a Maryland man won a $40,000 Mega Millions prize after a psychic <laughs> told him that his deceased father wanted him to play the lottery. Okay. Okay, so your dead father traveled through the ethereal plane and he wants you to win a Buick Enclave. <laughs> so, <laughs> last year's model, not this... Newest one. Well, not a new one, not a brand new. It depends on the options, I guess. <laughs> it's like, it's like, also, I heard from that beloved aunt that you wanted to talk to. She told you to um, ha have a great summer. <laughs> <laughs> Keep yes. being yourself. <laughs> yes, the 55-year-old winner who chose to remain anonymous, told lottery officials that his father, an avid lottery player himself, told him through a medium to start playing Powerball and Mega Millions, and even gave him a set of lottery numbers to play. But then, and this is his story, I'm not like exaggerating or changing this for comedic effect, this is the story he volunteered, but then... Those numbers his dead father gave him through the medium didn't win anything, so he switched to quick pick tickets and he won 40K. <laughs> Sorry, no, uh, just quick follow up from the ethereal plane. Just checking in. He said to give you this magical deltohedron. <laughs> so it's a D10. No, it's just. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the way it always is with psychic stories, though, right? It always starts with. Well, okay, that's unlikely, but perfectly explainable. And then it gets ever less unlikely the more details you get until you're left with, well, that's perfectly unexceptional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's the lesson here? I guess it's g get advice from a psychic and follow it. Kind of? Yeah, there you S go. Skeptically approach the advice from the Oracle of Delphi because her <laughs> gaze into the future may be roundabout. Um, and hey, hey, for my fellow lottery players out there, do not let the mockery of Heath and Noah get you down. Because no, we, let it get you down. You we, my down. friends, will be the ones laughing when the parents of sick children are begging Heath to bite off their whole plan I have, <laughs> trust me, it's going to be hilarious. I will also be laughing at that. They, I mean. See, uh, we're all going to be laughing when we Well, not all it. of us. Duh, something happened with the audio. And <laughs> finally tonight, in dry white whining news, <laughs> if you thought a wet vagina is actually a disease, <laughs> have we got a bombshell for you. It turns out the plot in the first act and part of the second act of the murder mystery Glass Onion was just a big fat lie by the writer Ryan Johnson. He's a liar who <laughs> lied to us during that beginning part and middle part. And we learned about this insidious ruse thanks to the investigative reporting of Benjamin Shapiro, who used his keen detection skills to catch that slippery motherfucker Ryan Johnson <laughs> when he had the temerity, the unmitigated gall, to reveal his entire charade at the end of the movie like he didn't just lie to us. So, big thanks. <laughs> Do you know what color that herring was? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, big thanks to Benny Shaps for the great work 
that he does. He's also a movie maker. <laughs> but yes, he is. <laughs> yeah. context. Okay, I'm calling it now. In three weeks, a sweaty, disheveled Ben Shapiro is going to be warning his viewers that there's a dangerous Jack inside that lovely music box. <laughs> they need to be careful. It's so it was so good because like I had just watched that movie the previous day right and I I might have said out loud wow I'd give a million dollars to watch Ben Shapiro watch this movie and then he just basically <laughs> live tweets that exact experience <laughs> fucking Merry Christmas to me so good okay so we're gonna talk about this but we're not gonna give away the movie I but am. if you like to go in completely fresh with no spoiler talk at all. You can skip ahead uh, about a minute, minute 10, and we won't be discussing any plot points from there. I'll give you a quick pause for that. Okay, so the big revelation from Ben Shapiro came in the form of a 17-piece thread on Twitter where the Harvard Law School graduate, and again, also a movie maker, had an absolute meltdown about the loss of trust between a mystery writer and the audience. <laughs> he starts by saying... I regret to inform you that Glass Onion is actively bad. First, the writing. The first half of the movie is a complete misdirect and a waste of time. We only find out about the actual murder we're supposed to investigate a full one hour and ten minutes into the film, as well as an entirely new backstory. We're actively deceived by the writer. <laughs> exact words. I mean, look, I, I know Ben Shapiro already hates M. Night Shyamalan because he's brown, but I think if we could trick him into watching one of his movies, he might explode like the computer from War Games. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Try it. Yeah. So, and by the way, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, I assure you that what he's genuinely and honestly complaining about is the fact that this movie made him Think extra for no reason. <laughs> yeah, it is. I was trying to do this jigsaw puzzle, and then I learned there were other jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> so from there, Ben moves on to a big rant defending the downtrodden billionaire Elon Musk, who is represented sort of by one of the characters in the movie. Quote, now to the politics. Ryan Johnson's politics is as lazy as his writing. His take on the universe is that Elon Musk is a bad and stupid man and that anyone who likes him in media, politics, or tech is being paid off. This is an incredibly stupid theory since Musk is one of the most successful entrepreneurs in human history. How many rockets has Ryan Johnson launched lately? <laughs> End oh, quote. oh, what's this, Ben? What's this? It's a, it's an article in The Independent about how Elon Musk's recent loss of wealth is the greatest in world history, even accounting yeah. for inflation. Cool. <laughs> now you go, Ben. Now you go. No, like, we're talking about that includes falls of empires and shit in their calculus. <laughs> and again, no spoilers here, but OK, Ryan Johnson presents a profoundly stupid billionaire character just in general. Right, he wrote and shot this movie before all the Twitter shit happened. Yep, the fact exactly. that you cannot write an idiotic billionaire character into your movie without everybody thinking, oh, well, that's supposed to represent Elon Musk tells you just how stupid the theory <laughs> right. is. Yes, there is there is a cartoonish moment in the movie that Elon Musk tweeted. Like, it's so, yes, it's it not, right. not Ryan Johnson's fault. <laughs> or he got his hands on an early screenplay and is doing a really meta bit. <laughs> <laughs> also, just for the record, Ryan Johnson and Elon Musk are exactly tied in rockets launched. Well, yes. With zero. Yes. Much in the same way that Ryan Johnson and Jeff Bezos are exactly tied in the amount of Hitachi wand attachments they personally delivered in discreet packaging to Ben's wife within two days of order. <laughs> tied. So I'm going to skip ahead to the big closer here. This is what Ben Shapiro said to finish it off. Quote. That brings us to the final irony. Ryan Johnson is being paid $100 million to make two of these movies. So he's a rich, famous person writing stupid movies pretending to be smart. I'm projecting. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry. I, I started reading the subtext. Well, by yeah, no, that'll weird. fuck you up every right. time. No, continuing. <laughs> Ryan Johnson is the Elon Musk character. That's the dirty secret. Mm. If you hate money so much, why do you have some? The right's foremost intellectual, everybody. There <laughs> yeah. it is. Oh, for fuck's sake. I love the entire argument is, he fooled me, damn it, and then he closes with, and he's very stupid. <laughs> <He's> stupid. <laughs> and I think it's worth noting that just because Ryan Johnson could use that $100 million to 
by Twitter at this point. Exactly. It's, that's irrelevant. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Actually, it's very relevant, well, but not yeah, the actually. way Ben Shapiro <laughs> is trying to claim. Either way, the guy whose entire brand, Ben Shapiro, is facts don't care about your feelings. He just had a very emotional tantrum about how a fictional piece of mystery writing was flagrantly dishonest with him about the plot. Like like a dog that's angry about the snowball that just disappeared into the void when it landed in the snow. <laughs> and uh, also, in other news, did you guys know that horny women in your area are actually not ready to fuck? <laughs> they, they are, it's true. No, I did a lot of investigative research. They are not one click away. That's a lie. Lots of dishonesty flying around these days. That's all I'm saying. Lots of dishonesty. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. Thanks to Ben Shapiro. Thanks to Greta Thunberg. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like T-Ski, AJ, Unofficial Opinion, Ross Devereaux, Portly Monteau, nice, that's excellent, Disestablishmentarianism, Todd Clorox, the Clorox man with the Clorox plan, Jesse Colton, Jess Hall, Ali Galloway, Philip DeFord, Daniel Culver, Mr. Dugson, and Piare, whose beautiful vagina energy and beautiful dick energy could easily honeypot the fuck out of a sex trafficker with nothing but a tweet. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide, or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign-off. Go Jags! So all the potheads at home will know this feeling, right? Not comes late at night and you put away all the weed shit before you answer the door if you're not expecting anybody. It's never a cop, but just in case it's a fucking cop, you put all the weed stuff away. <laughs> so not comes to the door, put away all the weed shit real quick, go to the door. It is a fucking cop. And the cop says, um, and I don't want to use the, the, the actual name, but they say so-and-so here, somebody I've never heard of, a name that we're not familiar with. And they're like, well, we, there's a, he's a, he's a, first of all, they say he's a Puerto Rican, early 20s. And I'm like, weird <laughs> that you share his race right off the bat, you know? So like, you know, as, as though to say to us, like, you're white, I'm white, you know, come on. It's not, we're not after a white guy here, you know? Let's we're, all say our races. The one we're looking for. <laughs> so we're looking for a rah, Puerto, rah, rah. it's just a filthy fucking Puerto Rican, you know? <laughs> um, and, and they're like, you know, there's a, a bail bondsman or something looking for him, a bounty hunter looking for him uh, from Florida. And we've been asked to, to, to swing by and then I start thinking about it and, I, and I'm thinking to myself wait I just heard a noise a few minutes ago or like a minute ago out behind my house I assumed it was my neighbor taking his trash out I'm like but but cops have surrounded my house now is right. what it is they're expecting a Puerto Rican to shoot out of any fucking window now and so <laughs> I go to the door and sure enough there's this big fat ass cop standing on one side of the porch and then there's this other big ass cop standing over red by the lasers pergola. on your chest out of nowhere right, yeah <laughs> right right exactly and then there's this hefty guy who's like in the backyard and shit um and we're like yeah man nobody by that name lives here and they're like well how long have you guys lived here and we're like you know three years now going on four um and they're like so you're not familiar with the name i'm like no we've never even got any mail uh for that name and they're like oh okay well well, you guys have a good night, but it's like it's obvious they don't believe me. And so <laughs> ever since then, or I don't know about yesterday, but probably not yesterday, but but for like the next two days, they were really sloppily watching my house, staking out my house. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's just I like I like there's a possibility that they like want to be seen they want to make it obvious to this guy that you know like we're on to you we know your friends covered for you but we know you're there 
but but like it might be that they just don't realize that I'm just like, hmm, weird that there'd just be a car that now parks three blocks down on the side of the road for seven hours in a stretch. Just reading a newspaper <laughs> the size of a car. Wait, did, did the yeah. neighbors get a new garden gnome of a full-size police officer that breathes? <laughs> Hello, fellow civilian. What are you doing? <laughs> it's just so, and I, and I want to fuck with him so bad. I got weed in my house. I'm not going to fuck with him. I want to fuck with him so bad. I want to just like, you know, wrap up stuff in Puerto Rican flags and sneak it over to the bushes and leave it there or whatever. <laughs> I just <laughs> absolutely calls for a trash body. I, I know you can't because <laughs> your house is full of drugs. But if there was ever a time to make a trash body and just like very conspicuously yes. take it out to the curb. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Push it into the into the trash bin. Yeah, that would be. Oh, but yeah, I think they're gone now. But for like two days, they were out there. And Lucinda had to remind me every morning. She's like, don't fuck with them. Don't fuck with them. Like, can I at least go get them donuts? Noah's wearing a giant hat full of plantains. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights.